morning my dear students welcome to our solar online class hope you are very happy the last class uh, we studied two important five mark question urea and miller experiments and the second question evidence for the uh, biological evolution so these two are the important five mark questions we have studied in the last class and we studied some two mark and three mark questions also okay hope you all studied these question answers Okay, my dear students. Today we are going to study about the next topic, the theories of biological evolution. Okay, already we have studied in the beginning of this lesson. We studied about the theories of evolution. So today we are going to study about th some theories explaining about the theory of, about the biological evolution. Okay, so listen very carefully. Our first theory is called Lamarck theory. Okay, our first theory is called Lamarck theory. So this Lamarck theory is otherwise called Lamarckism. Okay, Lamarck theory is otherwise called Lamarckism. Then this theory was introduced by one naturalist. His name is Jean Patrice de Lamarck. Okay, so this person only first explained this Lamarckism theory. And in the year of nine, sorry, eighteen not nine, he published one book. This Lamarck published one book. Name of that book is called Philosophy of Biology. Okay, so philosophy of biology is the book published by Jean Patrice de Lamarck in the year of 1809. So it's a very important one mark question. Okay, so in this book, philosophy of biology, this person, this Lamarck, explained about the biological evolution, how the living organism origin in the world. So he explained detailly all the evolution of the living organism in his book, Biology of Philosophy, Biology. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to study about two important principles of this Lamarck theory. Okay. The first theory, the first principle is called theory of use and disuse, and the second principle is called theory of inheritance of acquired character. So there are many principles are there in Lamarckism theory, but these two principles, theory of use and disuse. And the theory of inheritance of acquired character. These two are the very important principles. Explained by Jean Patrice Lamarck, Lamarck in his book Philosophy of Science. So now we are going to study about these two principles. The first principle is theory of use and disuse. According to this principle, or according to this Lamarckism theory, when the organism using a particular organ properly, that organ is increased in its size. I'm saying I'll repeat. When the organ is used properly. That organ is increased in size. At the same time, if the organism is not using one organ properly, that organ is automatically disappear from the body. Okay, so this is this principle is called the theory of use and disuse. So once I look at this principle, when the organ is properly used for more time, that organ is increased in its size. When an organ is not used properly, that organ is automatically disappeared from the body of the organ. So, understand a few? So here he explained two important. He has given two important examples. One example is for the use theory, a use principle, and the second example is for the disuse principle. Okay? For the use principle, useful principle, he used the giraffe species. You all know giraffe is a very tall organ. Okay, so according to the Lamarckism theory, once upon a time the giraffe species were very small. Okay, once upon a time the giraffe species is like an ordinary animals. Okay, so he tried to eat the leaves of the big trees by jumping. Okay, so because of so here they use their neck and the front legs for jumping purpose. So generation after generation, or during the course of time, automatically the size of the leg, front leg, and size of the neck is increased. Okay. So for the use principle, he used the example the evolution of giraffe species, and for the disuse theory principle, he used the snakes. Once upon a time, the snake had legs. Okay. So with the help of the legs only, they moved from one one place to another place. But the snakes not use their legs properly, so during the course of time, or automatically after generation after generation, the legs is automatically disappear from the body of the snakes. 
Understand a few? Understand? So now we completed the first principle use and disuse. Theory of use and disuse. So once again repeat the meaning. The first one is when a organism using their body organ properly, that organ is increasing in its size. At the same time, if the organ is not used properly, that organ is disappeared from the body. Hope you understood that. Second one is theory of inheritance of acquired characters. See, here some organisms are receiving a new characters during their lifetime. During their lifetime. So these characters are called acquired characters. These characters are called acquired characters. And these characters are inherited. That means these characters are transmitted from one generation to next generation. Okay. So the characters that are received or appeared or developed during the lifetime of an organism is called acquired characters and these characters are automatically transmitted to the next generation. Understand of you? So now we completed the two important principles of this Lamarckism theory. Okay, hope you understood that. Next one, see, objections to this Lamarckism theory. The Lamarckism theory was not accepted by some people. Okay, some people said some objection to this Lamarckism. Okay, so one important person, August Weissman. Okay, August Weissman, this person had disproved this theory of inheritance of acquired characters. So, theory of inheritance of acquired characters meaning the characters, okay, that some characters are transmitted from one generation to next generation. And according to this Lamarckism theory, when the organ is used properly, that organ is increasing in size. But when the organ is not used properly, this organ is disappeared from the body. So, this is said by this Lamarckism theory. But this August Weissman, this person is subjecting this theory or disproving this use and disuse theory by using an experiment with the help of a set of mice. Okay, with the help of a set of mice, he disproved this use and disuse theory. See, first he took a set of mice. He cut the tail of the both mice and he allowed them to reproduce. The next generation they produced some young ones. Then he cut the tails of these young rats also, sorry, young mice also. Okay. Again after they are, they are growing they, they are also allowed to reproduce. Like that 20 generation he cut the tail of all the newborn rats. Okay, okay. Now, according to Lamarckism theory, when the organ is not used properly, that organ is automatically disappeared from the body. This is a bit of Lamarckism theory. But here, he never, this Alasmeisman, this person, never observed any rat without tail. That means all the rats born with tail. But here, from the first generation itself, he cut the tail. Okay, 20 generations continuously he cut the tail. So the tail is here not used properly. So according to Lamarckism theory, the tail should what, uh, automatically disappear from the body. But here all the tails, sorry, all the rare mice had my tail. Understand a few? So he not accepted, all the spacemen not accepted this Lamarckism theory. Understand a few? Then. So now we completed the first theory, Lamar theory or Lamarckism theory and the second one is Neo-Lamarckism. Neo-Lamarckism means some people, some naturalists accepted this Lamarckism theory. For example, Hope, Osborne, then Packer. So like these persons, okay, like these many people absorbed and supported the Lamarckism theory. Absurd and supported the Lamarckism theory. See, according to this neo Lamarckism theory, adaptation is a universal character. That means every living organism is having some adaptation power. We having some adaptation power. Then, according to this theory, the organism getting or receiving some new character due to the change in environmental conditions. That means if any changes occur in the surrounding place, the organisms which are living in that place and getting some new characters. Okay, this is said by this neo Lamarckism theory. Understand of you? Then, during the environment, because of these environmental changes, 
the somatic cells of that is the body cells of the organism is stimulated the somatic cells of the body cells of the organism is stimulated so when the body cell is stimulated immediately they produce some secretions they release some secretions these secretions are transmitted through the blood finally it is reaching the sex cells after reaching the sex cells these secretions are automatically transmitted to the next generation automatically transmitted to the next generation listen a few so on same repeat this neo lamarckism a group of people accepted and supported the lamarck theory so they together that people togetherly introduced one theory that theory is called neo lamarckism theory then the first point about this neo lamarckism theory is according to this theory the adaptations are the universal characters every organism getting some adaptation power or new character because of the changed environmental condition then the next point if any changes occur in the environment or surrounding place some secretions are the somatic cells are stimulated so the somatic cells are producing some secretions that secretions are automatically transmitted to the sex cells through the blood from the sex cell they are transmitted to the next generations so the next born progeny so the young ones get some variations in their body get some differences in their body hope you understood about this neo lamarckism theory so now we have completed two important theories the third theory is called darwin's theory of natural selection otherwise called darwinism okay darwin's theory of natural selection otherwise called darwinism so this darwinism theory was introduced by charles darwin and he also has written one book one published one book name of the book is called origin of species by natural selection so origin of species by natural selection is the book published by charles darwin so a very important one more question so in this book he explained the evolution of various living organisms okay the evolution of various living organisms listen very carefully see and darwin visited so many places in the earth okay so when they when he uh, reach any or visit any places immediately he will do some experiment and he observe the characters of the plants and animals of that place okay so he observe the characters of the plants and animals that are living in different parts of the earth okay so those are different areas of the earth okay so according to his observations he observed some similarities in the characters of the living organism okay that means he observed some similar characters in some living organisms he observed some similar characters in the living organism understand a few then these organisms receiving sorry the, the plants and these organisms are receiving these characters because of some changes in the environmental conditions because of some, some changes in the environmental condition okay then some organisms having some super power that means having some adaptation power so with the help of these adaptation powers they can that organisms can face their problems organisms can face their problems so that organisms can live as a fittest organisms that organism can live as a fittest organism so according to this darwinism theory the fittest organisms only can live in the world and these organisms only can produce many projects many animals than the unfit organisms than the unfit organisms let's tell a few that darwin published this theory or introduced this theory by using some facts or by using some elements Let's have you. So now we are going to study about all these elements one by one. Listen very carefully. The first elephant, sorry, the first fact of this Darwinism theory is overproduction. Okay, overproduction. So the first fact of this Darwinism theory is so overproduction. See, all the living organisms increasing their population by different types of reproduction process. 
okay so the all the living organism increasing their populations by different whatever by some types of reproduction process but the reproduction capacity of the organism is differ from one organism to another organism for example salmon fish the salmon fish can produce 28 million of hair in one reproductive season or one breeding season is very carefully the reproduction capacity of the living organism is different from one organism to another organism Question of you. So, some organs are producing less number of young ones, some organs are producing high number of young ones. Here, salmon fish is the example for the highest reproduction capacity animal. So, it can produce 28 million of eggs in one reproductive season. So, if all these 28 million of eggs are catch, the entire sea is covered with the, what? Young salmon fishes. Then, second, the elephant is the slowest breeder. Elephant can produce only six young ones during their lifetime. They started the elephant started to reproduce the young ones from the, the age of 30. Till 90 years only it can what produce their young ones. So the elephant can produce only six young ones. So overproduction is the first fact in Darwinism theory. The second fact is called the survival, sorry, the struggle for existence. Second one is struggle for existence. In Tamil, we can say what they call Atta. See, all the organisms are struggling, are facing many problems. Okay, every living organism are struggling for food, living place, and also for mating, that means reproduction. And the struggles are differentiated or classified into three types. One is intraspecific struggle. Second one is interspecific struggle and the third one is struggle for the environment. So here intraspecific struggle meaning the struggle or competition between the members of a same species. Between the members of a same species is called intraspecific struggle. Just a few. Then interspecific struggle meaning the struggle or competition between the members of two different species is called Interspecific struggle and the third one is struggle for environment. Example, the living organisms are struggling to face the over flood or over drought or over earthquake. Okay, so like these environmental factors affecting the life of the organisms. Yes, of you. So maximum struggle is for many purposes, example for food or reproduction or living place. So the second fact of this Darwinism theory is struggle for existence. Understand of you? Then the third one is called universal occurrence of variations. Universal occurrence of variations. I already told you variations is one of the universal characters. Okay, universal characters. See, because of this. Variations, no two individuals are alike. We can see some differences even in the identical traits, even in the identical soul. So every organism is having showing some variations or showing some differences in their external appearance or internal structure or in their characters or in their behaviors. Understand a few? So some organisms, for example, children born to the same parents. Okay, one child, well, the children born to the same parents. Also, sometimes are they not similar in their characters, their height, their, their uh, color, okay, then behavior, everything. We can see so many changes in the characters, height, behaviors, everything. Person of you. So, variations is also a universal characters. Person of you. Then, some useful variations only transmitted to from one generation to next generation. Person of you. So, the nature select only the useful variations and these useful variations are transmitted from one generation to next generation okay and these use, useful variations are highly supporting the organism to live as a successful organism okay helping the organism to live as a successful organisms First of you so various universal occurrence of variation is a third fact in the darwinism theory First of you then the fourth one is origin of species by natural selection.
are the other species with natural selection same according to this theory nature is the suitable selective force is a powerful selective force okay so according to this fact or this element the organism which are having the adaptation power can face their problem and they can live as a fittest organism and they can live as a fittest organism and that organism became adapted to change environment that organism can live in the change environment also is that true so these are the four important facts or elements of the darwin's theory or darwin's theory let's start with you then now we are going to study about the adjection is a very important three mark question adjection through this darwin's theory adjection through this darwin's theory see the first one is darwin clearly explain about the variations but he did not explain about the mechanism of variation that means he didn't explain how the variations are occur in the body of the living organism so simply he explained the variations explain the variations but he he failed to explain the mechanism of evolution variations okay so this is the first objection to this darwin sir theory then second one is he explained about the survival of fittest that means the fittest organisms only can live in the bird in the earth okay so he explained about the survival of the fittest but he didn't explain the arrival of fittest that means how this fittest organism arrived he didn't explain this fact let's go through so the second objection to this darwin sir theory is he explained about the survival of fittest but he didn't explain the arrival of fittest let's go through then third one is he his theory focused about the small variations but actually the small variations are not inherited not transmitted from one generation to next generation so this is the third objection to this darwin sir theory let's try a few then the fourth one is he didn't differentiate the somatoplasm from the germplasm here here somatoplasm means the changes or the explain about the body cells germplasm means explaining about the sex cells so he didn't explain or he failed to explain the difference between this somatoplasm and the germplasm let's try a few then the last one is he didn't explain the over specialization characters see according to this darwinism theory the organisms are having the adaptive power okay or super power only can live as a survive can live as a successful organism because that organisms only can face their problem okay this is said by darwin in his darwinism theory but he didn't explain the mechanism of this over specialization for example the development of very long tusk in the mammoth elephant tusk is in mammoth elephant the tusk is very big very big so with the help of this tusk they can face all the problem and they can live as a fittest organism but the mammoth elephant already extinct from the wild disappear from the wild because of the presence okay and in spite of the presence of these characters they are already extinct or disappear must like you then next one example oversized antlers okay this oversized antlers which we can see in the irish deer so this is one of the very big weapons so with the help of this i uh, sorry the, the, uh, this with the, with the help of this antlers this irish deer can face all the problems they can face their enemies okay but this elephant sorry this irish deer they are also extinct already disappeared Let's learn a few. So now we have completed or we have studied some objections to Darwin's theory. Hope you are understood. So now we have completed. What are the theories we have completed? Lamarckism, Neo-Lamarckism, Darwinism. Let's learn a few. Then here objection to this Darwinism is very very important for three mark question. Then the next theory is called Neo-Darwinism. The next theory is called Neo-Darwinism. See, a group of uh, Darwin's theory also not accepted by some naturalists, but a group of scientists or naturalists believe and accepted and supported the Darwin's theory. So they togetherly introduced or prepared a theory. That theory is called Neo-Darwin's theory. 
So this neo-Darwinism theory is supporting to the Darwinism theory. And a group of people already told example Ballas, Hackel and Weissman. So like this some people togetherly introduced this Darwinism theory by doing some modifications in the Darwinism theory. By using some new facts, by using some new discoveries, they did some modification in the Darwinism theory. Understand a few? Understand? So that theory is called Neo-Darwinism theory. That theory is called Neo-Darwinism theory. Understand a few? Then, according to this theory, changes in the frequency, gene frequency in a population is due to some factors. The factors may be mutations or variations or isolations. So because of some factors like mutations, variations and isolation, some changes takes place in the gene frequency of a population. Understand a few? Understand a few? Then, finally we are going to study about the last theory, mutation theory. This mutation theory was introduced or proposed by one of the naturalist, his name is Hago D. Barris. Hago D. Barris. And to, according to this theory, mutation theory, see mutation is one of the important characters, sorry, mutation is a sudden change occurred in every living organism's body. Mutation meaning is a sudden change occurred in every living organism's body and he explained, so how do you is this person explained this mutation theory by doing one experiment, he used one plant, evening primrose plant, okay, so by using the evening primrose plant, he did one experiment to publish this mutation theory and he observed there are different varieties of this evening primrose plant and all these varieties are due to mutation due to mutations then now we are going to study about the uh, one two or three more questions the salient features of this mutation theory salient features of this mutation theory see according to this theory the sudden and Large variations only are responsible for the new species, responsible for the formation of new species. So, mutation theory says the sudden and large variations only are responsible for the formation of or development of new species. But according to Lamarck and Darwin, the gradual variations, okay, the slow variations only are responsible for the development of new species. Listen up you, understand? Then listen very carefully. The first salient features of this mutation theory is mutation is transmitted from one generation to next generation. The first salient features. Then the second one is in a naturally breeding organism or naturally breeding species, mutation occur from time to time. In the correct time, automatically the mutation is happening in a naturally reproducing organism or naturally produ re producing organisms. Understand? And mutations are fully fledged. That means there is no intermediate forms are present. Understand? Then the last one is mutation is involved in natural selection or subjected to natural selection. Instead of you. So now we have completed the only important three more question, the salient features of mutation. What are the salient features now we studied? The first one is mutations or discontinuous changes are transmitted from generation to generation. And the second one is this the, uh, the second second one is the in a naturally breeding organism or naturally reproducing organism, mutation occur in time to time, from time to time, and mutations are fully fledged. Then the last one is these mutations are subjected to natural selection. The same difference. So I hope you all clearly understood today's topic. So today we have studied some theories. The first theory is Lamarck's theory or is called Lamarckism. Second theory is Neo-Lamarckism. Third one is Darwinism. And the fourth one is Neo-Darwinism. And finally we have studied the mutation theory. So today we have completed five important theories. Understand? Many two more questions, three more questions, and five more questions also there. One more question, many one more questions also there. For example, one more question: the book published by uh, D. Lamarck, or the book published by what is the name of the book published by Darwin? Okay, like that. Some one more questions also there. So try to complete today's and send the answer to me. In the next class, we'll meet you. Thank you.